are some different jobs that maybe animals have that we have too. Can you guys think of any of those? So put those in the chat. So if you have an answer to that, put those in the chat. Remember, if you have questions for us, put those in the Q&A. And we would love to answer your questions. What do we got? Anybody in our, our chat box? What kind of jobs do animals have that might be similar to what we have as humans? Let's think of any. Feed children. Feed children, right? Maybe like bears. bears. Right? Absolutely. Hunting and feeding. Oh, Wendy said trash man. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. What animals would that be? Let me think what animal would be a good kind of cleaner up, kind of recycler, cleaner of the world. Can you guys think of any? Oh, and Hannah said protect with a question mark. Yeah. Protection guards, uh, right? Like security guards, maybe. Nikki said bug. Uh, Elizabeth said raccoon. Okay, yeah. Kind of cleaners up, right? The raccoons are good at cleaning up and eating anything and everything, right? Anything else you can think of? Aaron has a question Are there any animals that clean things up? Yes, absolutely. There's lots of animals. Um, I like to call them recyclers of the world. Some of the things that maybe we don't really think about that are kind of gross, cockroaches. A lot of cockroaches, a lot of insects. Think about it, there's a bug called the dung beetle. Dung is another word for what? Go ahead and put it in. Here's a B, ends in a B. Boop, there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. It's boop. Uh, uh, Charles did the fancy title. The Feces. Oh, there you go, feces, absolutely. <laughs> so, right, so they're cleaning up bugs out there. They're cleaning that up, because you can imagine if we didn't have them out there doing that, I wouldn't want to leave my house. Cleaning up all those dead and decaying plants, too, because every fall, what comes off the trees? Falls, literally falls off the trees, right? We got leaves, right? So all that stuff. And we need animals out there to kind of help clean that up. So they're cleaning and eating all those leaves, right? And so you need animals to clean that stuff up, all the, you know, because unfortunately things die, right? And so we need animals out there cleaning all that up too. So yeah, so lots of cleaners, cockroaches, lots of bugs and insects. I can think of a bird. Can you guys think of a big bird that helps clean up the world? Maybe you've seen them at the side of the road. Right, vultures. Good job, guys. Absolutely. Vultures are a good one. So anything else? Any other cleaners? <laughs> vultures, pigeons, buzzards, crows, actually. Yep, hyenas. Good one. Nice job. Right, so lots of different animals out there kind of help to clean up the world. What other jobs do you think of? What other jobs do animals have that we might have in common? Ooh, pilot fish, that's a good one. Possums, good. Those are all good cleaners. Yeah, we got super oh, smart. I know, you're really good. How about farmers? Or landlords? Or dentists? Or keeping pests in control, right? Kind of the, the orca man <laughs> of the, the animal world. Terminix. Terminix, oh yeah, that's right. Terminix or orca, yeah. One of those <laughs> pest controllers, right? <laughs> that we rely on. That, so lots of different jobs that animals have that we can do, that they have, that we do too, which is pretty cool. And we'll kind of start with it. So I said um, dentist. Can you guys think of an animal? <laughs> What is a dentist? Let's see. Okay, I'm sorry, look at your, I'm gonna look at your chat. <laughs> see what you guys are telling us. Messenger birds for long distance communication. Oh, I like that one, that's cool. Clean your ways. What is that clean? Alligators teeth, ah, oh, you got it. Those are our dentists, absolutely. There's actually a bird called the Egyptian plover that literally go in their mouth and clean out their teeth. 
pretty handy to have around, right? Save on dentist bills. Yeah, <laughs> you, had a bird, you had a bird in your mouth in there cleaning. You never have to go to the dentist again, right? <laughs> brush your teeth. That's pretty awesome. That saves you from having to take the time to brush your teeth. You Absolutely. Like, That's for you. That's right. it. How, and, it, and it's kind of cool. So it's, it's helping the bird out, but it's also helping these guys too. So they're in there. Could you imagine having to trust? And, the, and, the, and they learn too that these animals are to help them. And so they don't do that because <laughs> that'd be bad. So it does it. They've learned that, you know, if I do that, then I don't have a dentist to keep my teeth clean, clean out all the kind of bacteria, um, keep my teeth from kind of rotting, kind of like we, while we go to the dentist, that kind of stuff. And so they say, they'll learn, well, I better not eat this guy because they're doing more good for me than just food. Yeah, so that's why they will just sit there with their mouths open and let them jump in their mouth, you saw in that picture, and clean out their teeth. It does look scary though. I certainly <laughs> don't know if I would be brave enough I know. to do that. I'd be, I know. Could you imagine having to be your bird and have to trust? You're like, okay, do, should I trust? Please don't, please please don't, don't eat me. Don't eat me. <laughs> but I think they, they learn from each other that, hey, we're going to help each other out. The bird's going to get food and he's going to get nutrition and he's going to get some pearly white teeth out of it. <laughs> right? So pretty awesome. So dentist. Who would have thought? Who knew? All right. Now, this one's kind of an odd one. How about a landlord? Kind of a landlord. Can you think of an animal? Why would they be a landlord? What do you guys think? Well, Let's put your thinking caps on. How can well, an animal be a landlord? Well, and also, what's what is a landlord? Maybe just in oh. case if you don't know what the landlord Good is. Good point. Thank you, Denise. Right. Well, you guys, you tell me, what do you think a landlord is? Get you guys thinking. Right? What do you think a landlord is? I don't, I don't really wouldn't wear a hat. And a person who owns land. I apologize, guys. A person who owns land. A person that owns land, yeah. We're lord of the lands, right? So, we, Absolutely. so, so far we have coral, kangaroo, turtle. 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 Oh, Giant yeah, yeah. armadillos, right? Lions. Right, that you're kind of very territorial, right? So they're protective of the territory. So this animal actually builds kind of like a, an apartment, we'll call it, and they let other animals use it, right? Can you guys think of an animal that might do that? You guys were on. I heard somebody say it. You were kind of on the right track. Uh, beaver is one. Beaver. There are some animals that will use actually beavers. That's a good one too, yeah. There's lots more. We're just using a couple of examples and we'd be here all day if we tried to get into all of them, right? So, what else? That is really cool, Charles, that your uh, biggest is your mom owns land. So that's a really good example. Right. Yep. That's a landlord. <laughs> just the land, the lording over the animals. Is that land? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a uh, turtle. Right. Absolutely. And specifically, this is the gopher tortoise. And it is a tortoise. You can tell by that high dome shape to his shell. And he's a gopher, called a gopher tortoise, because where would they build their homes? What do you guys think? Where would they build their homes? Do you think they're going to um, cut down some trees and, and build a house or climb up a tree? or maybe go underground. So we got ground, gopher holes, underground. Right. They actually got their name gopher because they dig underground, kind of like a gopher does. And they used to actually steal gopher, gopher holes too, and they will do that sometimes too. So they actually will dig underground. And then of course, lots of animals to come in. So and they're, so they're little so he too. is the here he is he's over oops. <laughs> it's disorienting um looking at the screen so here he is over there and those are all his tenants or his people that live in his house all the different animals that can use that space i can think of another really cool animal too that does the same thing cute fuzzy live in the midwest in the prairies they like to stand on their back legs. Yeah. Stand up. <laughs> Make cute noises. The prairie dogs kind of do the same thing too. We 
a meerkat, so you're on the right okay. direction. Oh, yeah, in, in Africa. Africa, absolutely, in Africa. In Africa. Meerkats kind of do the same thing. But in the United States, our version of meerkats are prairie dogs. So they're different in species, but they have similar habitats. They both build, like, um, how, literally houses underground. And like your house, your house, you have a kitchen, a bathroom, a living area, maybe a nursery for the young, and a bedroom, right? All that stuff. Same with the, the prairie dogs, the gopher turtle, all that stuff. So landlords, absolutely, so pretty awesome. Now do they provide bathroom areas for the bear tenants? Let's see, I'm gonna <laughs> check my, I'm not sure. <laughs> They might have to make their own bathroom. I'm not sure. Because I think the prairie dogs provide a bathroom area. Prairie dogs do, yes, absolutely. And then when it gets full, they just cover it up and dig a new one. Which is pretty nice. All right. Do you want to do the turtle? Sure. Okay. All right. I'll step back. Great. You need our friend? So we have a little friend with us today. And <laughs> That's always fun when you open it up. <laughs> you you. Smells oh. really bad in there. <laughs> so this is Vanderbilt. He's box turtle. So he's not quite a gopher, gopher tortoise uh, like we were talking about. Um, and up to he the has close a little on his face, so don't Let's mind see. that. Um, but he um, might yeah, be one of the like animals it. that would take over um, a gopher tortoise uh, habitat. Um, because during the winter months, they like to brewmate. They don't necessarily hibernate, but they go into a really, really deep sleep. And because they're really cold, and they don't, there's not a lot of uh, sun and a lot of heat to give him um, the energy he needs to really get around and keep going like he uh, would be in the summertime. So he, may, he might be one of the animals that would take over from a gopher tortoise. This is Vanderbilt. He looks a little different. Um, he has that little grumpy old man face on him um, because uh, we're not sure exactly what happened to him, but he was found with that kind of uh, missing part of his top beak. Um, possibly hit by a car. Possibly hit by a car. Um, but he was established that he could not properly live in the wild um, and eat properly like he could. Uh, you know, as he should. So we decided to um, take him in as one of our ambassador animals to teach people with. Um, here he he does very well. Um, <laughs> um, and he, we, we make sure we chop up his food for him nice and small and all that good stuff. So he's doing a really, really good job with us. Um, but he's a pretty cool little dude. Um, as you can see, he's not scared of anything. Um, he loves the camera. That's why, yeah. that's why you might have heard me giggling a little bit because yeah. he's just like, go oh, right as close to the camera as you can. Get a close look at that face. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Now, speaking of Vanderbilt and other turtles, do they have teeth? So they don't really have teeth like we do. They might have a little bit of a ridge in their um, mouth, but they mostly have a strong beak that like bites off chewable pieces of food when they're eating. And you can um, see the ridge in this bottom. Yeah. Really kind of sticking out. yeah, a little bit. Um, so it's not quite teeth like we do, but it's it's a ridge. Um, so yeah, does anyone else have any other questions about our little friend? Yeah, what does he eat? What does he eat? So these guys are what we call omnivores. So they eat pretty much anything um, they can get their little mouth around. <laughs> um, box turtles, when they're younger, really like to eat a lot of bugs and protein. So he'd be going after worms and maybe crickets and beetles and all kinds of good stuff. And as an adult, when he doesn't have to grow as much, he might go after a more vegetarian diet. So he would be eating more plants. He'd be eating grass and leaves and um, strawberries and all kinds of really good stuff. Um, we kind of help him maintain his size. No more questions for us? We're good? He's pretty cute. A little smelly and got some poop on his face, but it's all good. That's what happens when you hang out with some animals. I'm gonna put him back in his little home for right his traveling home and then he'll be put back in his regular home. Um so our next animal that we are talking about is a farmer. 
So does anyone know what kind of animal would farm? And you got any suggestions? Pretty, pretty, uh, not well known, I would say. I'd have to actually kind of research this a little more to really understand that, but it's pretty cool. What do we have? Uh, while they're answering, how old is Vanderbilt? He's about 20. We're guessing 20, 20 years old. Yep. He came That's into the zoo in 2006. Gotcha. So we didn't know how old he was. So we're guessing around 20-ish. Gotcha. Yeah, they're, they're, he's, uh, we're guessing 20. Um, and they can be living in their 50s if they're well taken care of. Um, long-lived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we did yeah. think it was a car. We're not quite sure though. It could have been a variety of different things. We just don't know since we weren't here when it happened. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the keepers here do take a lot of uh, good care of him um, and make sure his food is easy for him to eat, um, especially because he is missing that beef. Yeah, yeah. Um, for sure. So I think I see an answer. Did somebody oh, answer that? Yeah, we someone? have ants, um, butterflies, huskies, sheepdogs, farm. Okay. So, so I see you're on the right track. So ants specifically I was uh, looking for. So um, we have a couple of different species of ants. So um, humans, we thought it was pretty cool when we started cultivating plants for farming around 12,000 years ago, which is a pretty long time. Um, we thought it was a pretty big deal, but there have been little teeny animals that we never really realized that have been doing this for tens of millions of years. Um, one of those being leaf cutter ants. So um, this is a picture of one of the species of ant that would be um, farming. And what they farm is actually fungus. Uh, what they would be farming is fungus and some species of ant actually farm aphids. Who knows what an aphid is? Any ideas? Kind of a, it's a little bug. I'll give you that hint. And ladybugs kind of really like to eat it. Oh, a big pest. Small bug. Small bug, pretty much. Um, so yeah, so they uh, form these aphids as kind of like cattle. They herd them up into little groups and they move them to better plants uh, that have more food that they can eat or they will, um, kind of herd them up and protect them from ladybugs when I try and eat them. And they do that because uh, these little guys actually will secrete um, a liquid that's very sugary that the, that the ants like to eat. And so it's, it's kind of a weird thing, but they do do that. And then the leaf cutter ants will actually kind of cut off bits of leaves as their name kind of suggests. Um, and then they will uh, kind of chew it up and mix it with spit and poop. And mm, they, yum. yeah, I know. <laughs> and um, they grow fungus with it. And what they do is, what do you think they do with that fungus? Anyone know? Yeah, it is kind of ew. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gross. Uh, feed the aphids or eat it? Yeah, so they actually eat it for themselves and they feed the babies with the fungus and it helps them grow nice and big and strong. Um, they will actually tend to these farms as well. So they'll pick out like a species of fungus that aren't supposed to be in that farm. They will um, use pesticides, which is like a thing in their spit uh, that prevents germs from growing, like mold and stuff growing on the fungus. Um, so it's pretty interesting. Um, so it's an all-in-one farmer. All-in-one farmer, yeah. So um, they got the cattle, they got the plants, <laughs> they got their own pesticides. They so, do. Yeah. I mean, they're they're pictures of the, yeah. like their nests. Yeah, so this is a nest of one type of uh, farming ant. Um, and in this picture, it's actually farming um, plants. So some species of plants have learned or have kind of um, adapted to working with these ants and growing in these specific conditions um, because it gives them a place to, gives the plant a place to live and it feeds the animal. Um, and these are really important things for these ants to do uh, because these ants have kind of been growing up um, and evolving with 
this specific diet. And without this specific diet, they would not survive and they couldn't cut away old growth to make room for new growth. Um, so if you're maybe using pesticides or anything like that, um, maybe support farmers that don't use pesticides um, and things like that, because it harms a lot of different bugs, not just ants, um, that are really important to us. We don't really think about these little guys, but they're pretty important. Um, so yeah, another really, really cool animal job. And another really cool animal job, I think we mentioned it before, um, is about pest, or pest control exterminators, basically. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I have a little friend with me. He's a pretty good uh, exterminator. Well, yeah, he's not very little. <laughs> um, but he uh, is a good exterminator, and he was actually um, brought away from his natural habit. Well, not him specifically. <laughs> But his species was brought away from his natural habitat to um, kind of get, try and get rid of other bugs in other countries. To be an exterminator, right? Mm -hmm. The exterminator. Yeah. Um, but unlike exterminators, which typically go back to their place of work after they're done with their place, <laughs> uh, these guys didn't really have the option to do that. Hi, right, Chunky. How are you doing? Oh, he's so big. All right. We got this guy. What kind of animal do I have in my hand right now? Oops. We got frog and toad. Toad, bullfrog. Nice. Okay, cool. So you guys um, are pretty much on the dot. So he is a cane toad. Hi, buddy. Um, he's a pretty cute little guy, I would say. Um, at, at least for a toad. <laughs> um, but he has a pretty interesting story, or his, his species has a very interesting story. Um, so these guys are native to South America, um, and there they are a very opportunistic type of feeder. Oh, pee pee. <laughs> um, so these guys will eat literally anything they can get their mouth around. Um, they will eat dead things, they will eat living things. Um, they mostly eat bugs and uh, maybe a small mammal, maybe a small bird, um, but pretty much bugs and carry on or, or other you know, dead animals. So um, in the 1930s, uh, Australian government, they were having some issues with their cane crop and cane is just cane sugar. Um, and they were growing this, and there was a little beetle that was really tearing up their crop, and they really needed it to kind of go away because they had to make money, right? So they figured, you know, it'd be really going to be a little, let me just take this chunky little frog or toad and release him into the Australian <laughs> farms and hope for the best. Hopefully they'll eat the toad, eat the, eat the bugs. Well, these guys, does he look very athletic to you? Ooh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's like, oh, bet, bet. <laughs> All right. So. He's like, lady. He can move when he wants yeah. to. <laughs> um, but he's pretty chunky looking, right? He's pretty chunky. He may not look like he moves as fast as some bugs might move. As move. But he can't really climb. He's mostly a terrestrial animal. He stays, he stays on the ground. Um, but these cane beetles that he was trying, they were trying to get him to eat are really fast and can climb very well. And so the cane toad just came over here and was like, well, I can't really catch these guys. So I guess I'm going to have to find something else to eat. And that something else to eat was Australian native wildlife. <laughs> so as you can imagine, that was kind of a problem with these guys. Um, and they do have poison glands. These guys are very poisonous. Um, if you look on his side, right behind his ear, he has this like little pouch um, with some pores. It looks like pores. Um, but if you were to try and eat him or squeeze uh, those little pores, there would be pus that comes out that is poisonous and it can kill um, mammals. It can kill some, um, pretty large, pretty large animals. So they are pretty dangerous and not very good for 
animals that haven't really adapted to being around these guys like so they did. You're saying you shouldn't lick them, right? No, you should not lick them. Uh, you probably would hallucinate. <laughs> when yeah. he, he's like, no, you wouldn't. I'm very cute. You are very cute. Gosh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi, bud. Just bear with me a little bit. He's just like trying to get comfortable, but he's pretty cute. Hi. So yeah, we have um this guy. So in in his natural habitat, he would he does very very well, obviously. Um, and he should not be in where he is. He's just going around, going jumpy today, huh? Now, oh, will they eat this. them? Will they eat others of their kind? Yes, they are cannibalistic. They do eat each other. Um, so you can get them as pets. Uh, they're kind of uh, more of an expert level type of pet. So I wouldn't recommend it if you're not used to these kind of guys. Um, but yeah, so. He's making a noise. <laughs> so uh, while he's making a little stress, I would go ahead and put him back. Yeah. So um, while you're putting him back up, um, would you only be poisoned if you ingested the poison, or would, or if you come in contact with it, like if you touched him barehanded, would you also get that poison? Yeah. So it is um, a poison. So through any kind of contact with these guys and that poison, um, whether it be through eating them or through just touching his glands, you probably wouldn't feel very great. Um, so yeah, probably not a good idea to mess with these guys. <laughs> um, but like I was saying, um, I'm sure we see a lot of toads and a lot of frogs, especially around this time of year when it's very warm and a lot of um, animals are out and they're, you know, mingling and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but these guys are super, super important. They're, like we said, exterminators. So they eat um, many different uh, animals that could potentially harm gardens and things like that. Um, it might be a good idea to maybe do a craft, like a toad abode, um, to kind of help keep these guys around because they like to eat all kinds of bugs. One frog or toad can eat about a thousand insects in one season. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, it they eat mosquitoes, mm -hmm. they eat flies, they eat all kinds of stuff for them. Um, so yeah, see them, keep them around, they don't give you warts, I promise, you're good. That is definitely a myth. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so our next uh, kind of animal job that we are going to be talking about is an architect. So does anyone have any idea of what animals would be an architect? So what is an architect? Oh, true. Yeah. What is an architect? Does anyone know what an architect is? Anyone have any ideas? So is it awkward silence? Yeah, it, yeah. Take, it takes a moment. Um, okay, so we got someone who builds, designs buildings, yeah. oh, um, and some animals that they um, thought would be good architects are, let's see, we got birds, ants, termites, yes. ants, beavers. Good job. Nice. Ants with a smiley face, yeah. big smiley face. <laughs> That is awesome. So yeah, those are all really good architects, and that is what an architect does. They build wonderful buildings, um, and honestly, we would probably not be doing very well without our own human architects. Um, but we have a pretty cool um, architect example uh, for us. So we have a social believer. So these guys build these really awesome nests. They live in um, Africa or some, some can live in other places, um, but they build these really cool, and they're like apartments, so they're kind of like architects for apartments. <laughs> um, they live in these big groups, um, and they have their babies in these nests, as you can see maybe in this picture right here. They have little grumpy birds. Some little grumpy birds that are probably like, why are you taking pictures in my apartment? Um, probably nesting, though. Um, you can see another one of our little that's a, a pygmy falcon. And pygmy that's falcon? actually what would eat the baby birds, but because they're protected in the nest, they can't get to them. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. And then this is kind of the nesting site. Um, and it's actually big enough to where big, large cats can climb up in the tree and like kind of lay on the nest and just kind of sleep because it's a big warming spot. 
I actually have a pretty large size um, nest. Oh, sure. Yep, there's a, yeah. So this came from our weaver birds of the desert. Yeah, this one, make a mess. <laughs> um, this one came from one of our weaver birds at um, the desert. So you can see kind of where they would go inside in this hole. And they have a really cool way that they did this. They kind of use sticks as a good um, kind of structure, like maybe the foundation of a nest. And then they weave in these bunch of like dry grasses. They use some, looks like feathers, uh, maybe some leaves. Uh, I think I see hair. Mm -hmm. They picked up pieces of hair from It people. looks like fur maybe fur too. as well. So I always tell people if you're you're uh, brushing your dogs or cats in like the springtime, yeah. throw the hair outside. The birds they, love it. Yes, they do. Hair. Absolutely, you can stuff bits of animal hair in like a a sweet feeder mm -hmm. thing. Sweet feeder, yep. Um, and they'll go and they'll make a mess with it. But these guys do the same thing. Um, pretty awesome stuff. And we had to cut that one in half because it was too big for us to <laughs> yeah. find a space to keep it. Oh so. man. So yeah, they're pretty, pretty amazing. Now, how big can the nest in general get? Like in the wild, if it was a normal, you know, normal situation where groups of them are together, how big do you think they could get? Do I think they could get? Um, I mean, it would be a, a, enough to house a good few families. Um, I would say anywhere from like five to ten maybe more the there might be a cheat sheet yeah, um, i think there is because we talked about it nope, not that one, another one. But, um, <laughs> yeah you can see there's a bunch of holes so it houses a good few families they all kind of hang out together I want to um, say like 50 to 100 50 families. to 100 yeah oh, and do um this is not a question from somebody but do other animals use that as an apartment as well like are there yes. other animals other, that use it other species of bird um, have been known. Um, and in woodpeckers, uh, their homes are actually used as well for um, other birds' houses. Oh, or landlords. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say there's late, they're landlords too. Um, and that nest is real. It is real. Yep. Yes. Um, and how do the birds stick everything together? How do birds in general stick things together? That's a good question. So um, if you have ever weaved a basket, um, it's kind of similar along those lines. So they have to very, do it very carefully and they have to have a very good supporting structure. Um, and then they just find sticks and twigs and they kind of put them together like maybe like Lincoln logs, but a little more complicated <laughs> um, if anyone's ever messed with Lincoln logs. Um, and then they just kind of weave the more flexible strands around it to kind of tie it all together. Um, so it's a very intricate process and it takes a lot of time. And a lot of uh, birds will actually make these ginormous nests to attract a mate because the lady comes in and she's like, I like that house. That's a nice house to have a baby in. <laughs> um, or that one looks really pretty. Bower birds make really pretty houses with a bunch of colorful things. Um, um, you know, kind of show up and be like, hey, I built this for you. Please have my babies. <laughs> um, so yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, another kind of weird nest that is kind of gross are hornbill nests. Um, so basically what happens is after the male and female meet, um, the female will begin to build her nest, but she builds it out of her own feces. She builds it out of mud and she literally will lock herself in so that she is inside of this like <laughs> inside of a tree. structure. Yeah, yeah it's inside of a tree, it. but she can't get out. She kind of has to break out after the chicks have hatched. She leaves a little hole in there so the male can feed her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so the man is probably like, she'll lock herself in this like little cage kind of, okay. and the male's just kind of like, I have food. Um, please come out soon, any babies. <laughs> um, and then once they're hatched, and she kind of breaks open the thing, and the babies can come out, and they can do their bird thing out as an adult. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's kind of gross because they, you know, they don't. <laughs> they use different resources as other animals do. But so Steve had a question: Do the um, 
the, that bird nest kind of end up about the same size as eagle nests, like in terms of how big they get? Are they kind of up there, like with the, the eagle nest? Weaver? I yeah. think it's close. They're pretty close. close together. They're pretty. Yeah, the eagle nest was big, heavier because mm -hmm. they use bigger branches and bigger sticks and stuff. Well, they're also bigger birds yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you, social weavers eat? So um, they are pretty much insectivores. They like their bugs. Um, they're very into worms. Um, they'll go out and maybe pick up like scorpions and things that are out in the more deserty areas of Kenya, I think specifically. Um, and so that's kind of what they go after. But, um, so yeah, like animals have a lot of really, really awesome jobs that are very important to us, or I guess to each other. And a lot of them are kind of um, reflected in our society. So we have dentists, we have uh, landlords, we have pest control, we have garbage people, animals, um, we have um, all kinds of stuff. So what can you guys think of an impor the importance of maybe the Egyptian plover and the crocodile? situation because it's a pretty important job what she's doing right anyone do you know the importance so thinking back to the bird that cleans the gator's teeth yes or crocodile's teeth excuse me yeah. it is the awkward silence part of the yeah. <laughs> like, so well. that's like it's a little bit yeah. no worries okay it's all good <laughs> or are we crazy yeah yeah so the Egyptian plover does what for the crocodile? Let's let's start with that. She or he, I guess, goes in, and what is she doing? What kind of job would she be doing that he needs to do? Birds clean, cleans it, cleans their teeth. Cleans their teeth. That's right. They're they're dentists. And these crocodiles, they have little T Rex arms. Can't really floss. There's no floss out in uh, the Nile River. Unfortunately, I'm sure they're, <laughs> I'm sure they're so sad about it. Um, and what about the importance of the gopher tortoise? What was he doing that was pretty important? Creates homes. Creates homes, yes. that's right. So yeah, they have, they provide homes for all these animals. Um, unfortunately though, they are considered threatened um, they live in typically Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, um, Mississippi, but they're considered threatened because of deforestation. Um, deforestation obviously tears these homes up and it leaves a lot of animals homeless in the wild. Um, so they kind of have to go and find new territory and sometimes that might include areas where people live. Um, so a good way to kind of help protect gopher tortoises is to um, visit wildlife uh, reserves where these guys might live, um, maybe donating money to those reserves and their conservation. Um, and I mean, in general, helping out con con conservation <laughs> um, <laughs> by coming to the North Carolina Zoo. We do a lot of really awesome projects for animals all over the world. Um, we help out our, our pest control with our little uh, Puerto Rican frogs, and we do, <laughs> um, we have a lot of projects for a whole bunch of other animals as well um, that really help them out. So does anyone have any other questions for me about what we talked about or anything? <laughs> uh, there was one about the picture of the, I guess, ant. Uh -huh. Um, I think not the end itself, that one, yeah, this yeah. is the, where it says, is this the brown part the actual colony? So the brown part is um, where the plants would attach. Um, so I think this is just the farming, it's not a part of like, because these guys live in the trees, they don't really have a, a nest like they would underground. Like a termite. Um, but yeah, yeah, so they might build some structures on branches. Um, but I imagine that this is pr primarily just for farming. Um, that might be like the fungus, right? The brown stuff might actually be the fungus. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. true. Um, okay. Now, does the website have any instructions on how to make a totem boat? 
for Bird House? There is, yeah. actually, yes. If you go to nczoo.org and visit our virtual page, our virtual visit page, there's all kinds of different crafts and stuff, and the code of code is in there. So you yeah. guys can see how to make one. Super easy. Super, super easy. It's really fun. You can make a really, really cute. I made one with some little fairy house. We'll plug in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, uh, thank you so much. Oh. You got a question? It looks very, it's like a very long question. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, no, I think it's just a comment. Uh, uh, Angela, what was your question? We should be. She commenting about what was she commenting about? Uh, no, Angela, so can you please answer? I'm not quite sure what Angela's question was. Oh. <laughs> So. Well, maybe Steve and uh, Wendy and one of those guys got it. Maybe. Cool. All right. Well, well, thank you for joining us today. Um, make sure to keep up with any updates that the zoo has via Facebook, Instagram, our website, great resources. Um, and keep continuing to support us and being awesome. So, thank mm -hmm. you.